Do you know that the thing that gives us joy could be the very thing that could rob us of our joy? For example, the people that we rely as our, as our source of joy could someday be the source of our misery. If we base our joy on circumstances, and later on, an unfavorable circumstance would come, it would rob us of our joy. If our source of joy is on our reputation, our achievements, our money, then it's possible that we will lose all of this and it will cause us grief. That is why Jesus warns us that our lives do not consist in an abundance of possession. Unfortunately, a lot of people today, they are slaves to material things. Na ang ilang mga butang ang nagpahatag nila og kalipay. And that is why a lot of people do not experience true joy. The object of our joy is the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not people, it's not circumstances, and it's not even the material things in the world. Walay butang sa kalibutan ang makahatag nato og tinuod nga kalipay. That is why Paul exhorted the Philippians to rejoice in the Lord na, na, mag, na magpalipay sila sa ginoo. So this morning, our passage uh, is found in Phil- Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. So we will study the passage atong himahimayon para masabtan yun nato unsa ang pulong ng ginoo para ka nato karong buntaga. So if you have your own Bibles, please open. So we'll be reading from uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Sa katapusan, akong mga igsoon pag lipay diha sa ginoo. So magtingala mo, what does this word finally mean? No, What this, does this word finally mean? Does it mean that uh, this is the end? Uh, uh, this is the end of the letter of Paul? Well, the word finally in Greek, actually it means as for the rest, as for the rest, meaning as for what remains to be sa- said. So, dili pasabot na na uh, last na ning last statement na ni Paul. In fact, uh, Paul is moving to another subject matter. So, ang, ang finally, sabi na, my brothers rejoice in the Lord. Actually, kung kaning kaning gingon niya na rejoice in the Lord, you should connect this one to Philippians chapter 2, verse 17 to 18. So what happened in Philippians chapter 2, verse 17 to 18? Uh, Paul said that he is prepared to be poured like a drink offering. Na gi-offer na niya ang iyang kagulingon sa mga Philippians. And then uh, he is glad and he rejoiced with all of them. Uh, he wants to rejoice with the Philippians. And then afterwards, he described niya ang dua katabang niya silang Timothy and Epaphroditus. Uh, showing that they're willing to suffer for the Lord. So, moto, ang continuation ane is kaning chapter 3. Finally, sabi niya, rejoice in the Lord. Usi pasabot ng in the Lord. Ang atong, uh, the, this means that the basis and the focus of our joy is our Lord Jesus Christ. Ang atong basehan sa atong, sa atong kalipay is atong relasyon kang Jesu Cristo. So, if you notice, rejoice in the Lord. This is an action word. Re- be, uh, rejoicing does not depend on our feelings. Wala, wala ni ingon si Pablo, okay, you feel joy. Pero ingon siya, you rejoice. It's an action word. It's, it is something that we choose to do. Atong buhato ni na mag, mag, malipay ta. So, we choose to rejoice. It's not something that we choose not to do. No, We, 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 we choose to, to rejoice uh, and we choose not to do something else. So, you know, a lot of people, dali na sila madiscourage, ang ilang source of joy is ang circumstances. So, kung, kung maayo ang mga circumstances, kung maayo ang uh, uh, everything goes well, they will be happy. They will be joyful. But that should not be the case. Kay ang atong basihan sa atong uh, kalipay, kundi ang ginoo. We should rejoice in the Lord. Not rejoice in our money. We should not rejoice in our bank account. Kung daghan kwarta, malipay ta, paggamay, wala. We should not rejoice in our possessions. We should not rejoice in other people. Instead, 
Very clear ang ingon ni Pablo, dapat malipay ta sa Ginoo. We should rejoice in the Lord. Kasi, um, because it is the Lord who can control our circumstances. Siya ang maka-control sa itong mga sitwasyon. And sometimes, God will not change our situation, but He can change our heart. So, ang attitude, importante ang attitude. It's how, how we see things. No? Uh, he cannot... He, the Lord may not change our situation, but He can change how we respond. So that's why it's very important that, that rejoicing is a matter of choice. It's not based on feelings. It's a matter of choice. And in English, it is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. Dili disod alang kanako ang pagsulat pag-usab sa samang mga butang kanimo o kini usaka panalipod alang kanimo. So what do you mean by this one? So, sabi ni Pablo, okay, uh, kung mabantay ninyo, ang letter ni Paul, he, emphasize, he emphasizes on joy, rejoicing. Paulit-ulit. Even from, starting from uh, chapter 1, he keeps on repeating, telling the people to rejoice, be happy, be joyful. So sabi ni Pablo, it's not trouble, dili problema na ako, na utrohon na po na ako, na iutrohon na po na ako, na parang... It, it doesn't mean that makulit si Paul, but it is necessary to repeat the same thing because rejoicing in the Lord is a safeguard for you. O siya pasabot, Ana, rejoicing in the Lord is a safeguard. Kasi sometimes if we focus our attention uh, uh, on things of the world and uh, pag dili maayo ang naitabo na to, ang, ang unang reaction na to, madiscourage ta ma discourage and then maluya ta pero instead ingon ni Pablo dapat atong buhaton is to rejoice always even if you don't feel like to because it will be our defense against discouragement so instead of mahadlok ta instead of we feel fear doubt or discouragement Paul is telling us to rejoice we choose to rejoice so that we can not think of negative things we focus on Rejoicing in the Lord. We choose to rejoice. Bisan lisod ang atong kahimtang. Uh, we rejoice in the midst of hardship because it is the greatest defense that could make us turn away from the Lord. So rejoicing is a matter of choice. So we have to remember that. Dapat malipay ta sa ginoo. We should not rejoice based on what is happening around us, but instead the focus of our joy is the Lord Jesus. So that is the first lesson that we can learn from this passage, that rejoicing is a choice and we have to do it. And also, kaning rejoicing is also a safeguard against the danger of the false teachers. So, kaning ang yang explain sa verse 2. Let's connect. Watch out for those dogs, those men who do evil, those mutilators of the flesh. Bantay ka tong mga iro, Katong mga tao nga nagbuhat o daotan. Katong mga tigdaot sa unod. So what do you mean by this one? Giwarningan ni Pablo ang mga Filipians na they have to look out, they have to be vigilant against these three groups of uh, people. Dogs, evildoers, mutilators. So three groups of people. And for other authors, nabasa na ako na, they consider them only one group of people. Uh, the, the first term refers to their character, mura sila mga iro. The second refers to their conduct, mura sila mga, uh, they, they, they do evil. And the third is, it refers to their teachings because they, 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 they teach people to mutilate their flesh. Let's uh, explain later on. Okay, let's, uh, unsay pasabot na mga dogs? Kasi yung mga Jews, they call the Gentiles dogs. So, pangit, di ba? Parang, uh, uh, pasabot na, they look down on dogs. Dogs are, uh, if you do not, you, if you are not Jews, you are Gentile, so you are considered dogs to their eyes. And they use the term dogs to refer to Jews that are unclean. Kaya mga hugaw ng mga Jews, uh, ritually unclean. Dili kung physically unclean, ritually unclean. And, and ang gibuhat ni Paul, he used the same derogatory word na dog that is being used against Gentiles, gigamit niya kanyang mga kaaway niya, mga false teachers. These false teachers are actually, actually uh, Jews also, and Paul uh, is calling them dogs. 
And who are these dogs na tinatawag parang gi, 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 giingnan ni Pablo? These are the Judaizers. Kasi pa sabot ng Judaizers. Um, these Judaizers, these are Jews. Kay, um, during that time, di ba, remember the gospel first came to the Jews. Uh, daghan naging Christians among the Jews. And then, uh, God commissioned Paul to go to the Gentiles. So, niyato si Pablo, magsangyaw sa mga Gentiles, na nahimong Christian. And then, here comes the Jews, gikonvince niya mga hentil, na kamo mga hentil, dapat mag-convert mo to Judaism. You have to follow the rituals of, the, the, the Jewish rituals, like circumcision, kailangan ninyo na so that you can be saved. And then, uh, here comes Paul saying that, you Judaizers are wrong. Because faith is enough for salvation. You do not have to be converted to uh, Ju- Judaism. That's why nagkaroon ng debate ang early Christian and in the, in the Jerusalem council that was led by Peter, James, and John, they agreed that these Gentiles do not need to follow the Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, rituals. They, na, they do not have to be circumcised. All they have to do is to abs, uh, abstain from uh, eating meat with blood and then sabi niya, uh, to abstain from sexual immorality, etc. Pero they do not have to follow the rituals, the Jewish rituals. They do not have to be circumcised. Pero the problem is, kanyang mga uban Jews, Jews, dili sila, uh, uh, wala sila ni uyon. That's why whenever Paul preached the gospel, these Judaizers will follow Paul and they will try to convert the Greek, the, the Gentiles. I mean, okay, you have to convert to Judaism. You have to be circumcised. You have to do this, do that, do that. So, kani ang mga kaaway ni Pablo. So, uh, Paul is telling them that uh, these people are wrong. These people are false teachers because they are teaching or, or they're trying to mix law and grace. So, they are called the Judaizers. And the second group of people are the evil doers. Okay, these are the people who profess to be Christians, pero uh, lahi ang ilang binuhatan. They are doing evil works. And the third one are the mutilators of flesh. Well, the mutilators, bakit mut- mut- mutilators? Kasi um, the Judaizers, uh, they are teaching people, dapat okay, kamo dapat magpatuli mo. Uh, because circumcision, according to them, is essential for salvation. You can find that in Acts 15 verse 1. So there, there was a debate during that time. Pero sabi ni Paul, circumcision is not necessary because circumcision is only mutilation, mutilation of the flesh. And then, explain ni Pablo why. Because under the new covenant, circumcision of the flesh is not necessary to enter into a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. Kasi sa Old Testament, if you remember, uh, God told Abraham dapat uh, dapat he has to be circumcised, he and his children, because this is the sign of the covenant with God. Pero when Jesus came, circumcision is no longer required. And what is more important is the circumcision of the heart. Ang pinaka-importante is circumcision of the heart by the Spirit. You can find that in Romans chapter 2, verse 29. Mas importante ang pagtuli sa kasing-kasing kaysa sa pagtuli sa physical. And... Um, so what can we learn from this passage? So si Pablo, very particular siya, sabi niya, okay, we can learn here that in mga religious rituals, mga practices, these things will not save us. Like circumcision, baptism, the Lord's Supper, or even giving tithes. So ayaw mo mailad na, okay, pag dili mo mahatag tithes, dili mo maluwas. These rituals are not necessary because uh, we are saved only by faith, in Jesus Christ. Si, si Ginoong Hesus lamang ang niluwas nato, dili pinaagi sa pagsunod nato sa mga ritual. And you know, our joy comes not from observing these religious rituals, but by putting our confidence in the Lord Jesus. And then, padayon ta, in verse 3, ingon ni Pablo, for it is we who are the circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory in Christ Jesus. Apan kita mao ang mga may circumcision. Kita nga nagasimba pinaagi sa Espiritu sa Dios nga nagapasigarbo kang Heso Kristo. So Paul is calling we, meaning kita mga true believers, mga Philippians, kita ang mga tinuod na Christians, dili kani mga Judaizers. Kasi 
we worship God in spirit. We worship God in spirit, not because we follow these sets of rituals. And then, sabi ni Pablo, and we put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. O wala kita magsalig sa unod. Bisan tuod, ako adunay mga rason alang sa maong pagsalig. So what do you mean by that? We uh, who do not put confidence, we don't trust, we don't put our faith on our flesh. Our flesh is our bodies. Ang pasabot na wala na nisalig sa atong binuhatan, kundili nagsalig ta sa ginoo. And then, uh, uh, gi-explain ni Pablo kung, kung ano, uh, if anyone else thinks that he has reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. So, una-una, sabi ni Pablo, we should not put our confidence in the flesh. So, sayo mo. Pero kung, 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 kung basahan ang atong flesh, mas labaw si Pablo, ingo siya. So, what do you mean by that? So, from verses 5 to 6, Paul uh, gilista niya ang mga advantages na naan niya na pwede niya gamiton sa pagsigarbo. So the first four were inherited privileges and the last three were personal achievements. So let's discuss one by one. Sabi na, I have more things to boast of. Number one, sabi na, I am circumcised on the eighth day. Tungod kay gituli ako sa ikawalong adlaw. Kaning pagtuli sa ikawalong adlaw, you can find that in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3. Because in the Bible, God commands all the Hebrew babies, uh, Hebrew baby boys, to be circumcised on the eighth day. So, ang circumcision, this is a sign of the covenant with Abraham. And sabi ni Pablo, yes, I have complied with all of this. In fact, kanyang circumcision, muragi adapt ni siya all throughout the century. But actually, this circumcision is only for the Jews. Gentiles, not, not required. And then, ingon siya, uh, circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews. So, uh, sabi niya, Israelin ho nako, sakop ako sa tribo ni Benjamin, usako Hebreo Hanon sa mga Hebreo Hanon. So, yun si pasabot ni Pablo, why is he trying to boast about his family heritage? So, sabi ni Pablo, he is boasting because he is an Israelite by birth. He's an Israelite, and then he comes from the tribe of Benjamin. So what's so special about the tribe of Benjamin? Uh, if you remember the history of Israel, nagbulag ang north, northern kingdom and southern kingdom. Ten tribes went to the north, two tribes only in the south. The tribe of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin. So the tribe of Benjamin, Benjamin they were loyal to the house of David. So mauto, special sila. And then isa pa, si Benjamin... Uh, if you rec recall, he is the son of Rachel, whom uh, Jacob loved. No? Between, he and, uh, between she and Leah, mas mahal ni Jacob si, uh, si Rachel. And then, uh, he, is the, he is a Hebrew of Hebrews. So, talagang Hebrihanan siya. So, it will show that he is, uh, his ancestors are Jews. And then, he also speak Aramaic, which is the national language of Israel during that time. And then, ingon po siya, in regard to the law, I am a Pharisee. Uh, may tungod sa balaod, usako pariseyo. So what's so special about Pharisees? Well, Pharisees during that time are very respected people. People look up to them. In fact, uh, in special occasions, tagaan yun sila mga uh, best seats in the banquet. So they are highly respected. They are strict, disciplined. And the problem with them is that uh, they add... Uh, man-made traditions in their interpretation of the law of Moses. So, ang, ang balaod na ginoo, gidungagan pa nila. And then, they insist on people following it. That's why, kaaway kayo ni Jesus ang mga Pharisees because they are hypocrites. Kumbaga, outer show lang ang ilang religiosity. So, ingon si Pablo, kung, kung Pharisee lang, I'm a Pharisee. In fact, I'm not only a Pharisee, I have... I have come from a good educational background. Because if you remember, see, uh, Paul, he was a disciple of the great Gamaliel. Gamaliel is a very uh, respected Pharisee. So he is one, uh, Paul is one of his, uh, of his uh, pupils. pupils no? So, and then aside from that, siya, as for zeal, uh, persecuting the church. Kung kagugihan lang ang hisguton, labaw ako. Kay gilutos ko ang iglesia. So when was the time that 
Paul uh, uh, persecuted the church. Kasi during that time, ang, ang old name ni, ni Paul is so, Saul. Saul. Uh, because he feel that these uh, Christians, they are violating the law of Moses. That is why, because of his uh, zeal, zeal for the for for protecting the you know, the the law of Moses, he went out to persecute the churches, the church members. He was there to murder uh, Stephen and a lot a lot of uh, religious. Uh, I mean, so a lot of Christians were persecuted and killed under the command of Paul. And during that time, Abini Paul, he was doing God's work. He was so convinced, he was so zealous for the work of God that he went on killing Christians. But what happened? On the way to Damascus, he met the Lord. The Lord appeared to him. Nagpakita ang ginoo kaniya, and then nagpaila-ila, why are you persecuting me? And because of that, Paul asked, who are you? And then, I am Jesus of Nazareth, who, whom you are persecuting. When Paul encountered the Lord Jesus, he was converted from a number one persecutor of Christians, na himogisya, number one defender of the faith. So, makita nato, no? Kung nasa ipasibar, uh, nasa ibos, nagisya daghan ibos. And then, sabi na, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. Bahin sa pagtuman sa kasaguan, walay ikasaway ka nako. What do you mean by this legalistic righteousness? Sa uh, English Standard Version, this is translated as righteousness under the law, which is more accurate. Righteousness under the law. So, ang pasabot ni Pablo, he is blameless, not because he is uh, sinless or perfect, but uh, according to him, he followed all the law of Moses. And if you remember, diba, in the Old Testament, if you sin, you can uh, you can go to the priest, offer sacrifices for the forgiveness of your sins. So the meaning of Paul is that he has complied all of this. He has uh, he has uh, made the appropriate sacrifices for the forgiveness of his, of his sins. That is why sabi na I am blameless. I am faultless. Wala koy wala kay kasaway nako. So makita niyo, Paul boasted seven things about him. Sabi niya, kung, kung naalang yun ikasi, uh, ikasi garbo, na ako tanan. No? Pero what did he say in verse 7? But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Apan bisan unsa nga nakaayo kanako karon, apan kini walay kapuslanan tungod kang Kristo. So Paul considered all of his achievements in life nothing worthless for the sake of Christ. So para, para niya, kani mga paging Pharisee niya, paging religious leader niya, his zeal, everything, his religious, uh, religious attainment, all of this are nothing. And he considered them as lost for the sake of Christ. And then uh, in verse 8, ingon siya, what is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Dugang pa, giisip ko ang tanang butang walay kapuslanan kung itandi sa labaw nga pagkadako sa pag-ila kang Kristo Jesus nga akong ginoo. Tungod kaniya, gisalikway ko ang tanang butang. Gisalikway niya. So what do you mean by this one? Let's just uh, himahimay na to. So para kay Paul, he counted all his reputation, all his education attainment, all his achievements, all of them, they are nothing. They are loss. So makita na to, kabalo si Pablo, where his identity lies. Paul knows where his identity lies. Paul was not defined by his accomplishment in life. His identity is in Christ Jesus. So para kay Pablo, what is important is to know Christ Jesus. To know Christ Jesus, that is the mo most important thing for Paul. So question, what do you mean by to know Christ Jesus? So to know Christ Jesus is to have a close relationship with Him. To know Christ Jesus is to have a close relationship with Jesus through faith. It means to experience His love and to be loved by the Lord. To love the Lord and to be loved in return. 
So makita na to, that is the most important thing for Paul. In fact, sabi ni Paul, I'm willing to give up everything. I'm willing to give up my life. I'm, I'm willing to give up my accomplishment, my influence, my education, even my life. That is why makita ninyo ang kinabuhi ni Pablo. Grabe kayo ang mga suffering na iyang gidaanan. He was shipwrecked. He was tortured. For him, the, nothing. No? Parang people may be wondering, Paul, sayang ka. Kasi sayang yung uh, uh, expertise mo sa law. Why are you doing this? You are wasting your life. But for Paul, he was not wasting his life. Because for him, everything that he had in the past, they are considered lost, useless. So para kang Pablo, ang pinaka-importante ang iyang relasyon kang Heso Kristo. So Paul exemplified his, his teaching in Philippians chapter 1, verse uh, 21. Sabi niya, to live is Christ, to die is gain. So para niya, mamatay, that's the gain. And then sabi, uh, dugang pa niya, I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. I consider all my achievements, all the things that I have, rubbish. So the Greek word for rubbish refers to something useless, undesirable. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, translated as garbage or dump or feces, excrement or tae. Parang, let's, uh, parang yun ang pangit pakinggan, di ba? But para sa kanya, useless, rubbish, garbage lahat. Ang iyang mga uh, achievements in life. Para niya, baliwala na sila. So that I may gain Christ. Para na ako baliwala sila, mas importante na ako na, uh, na maako niya si Kristo. So, you know, Paul is alluding to the saying of Jesus Christ while he was on earth. Sabi ni Jesus, di ba? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his own soul? Matthew 16:26 saka Mark 8:36. Okay, let's pause for a while for application. So what can we learn from this? How can we learn from Paul's example? So the question is, un saman importante sa imo? What is important to you? Is your family heritage important? Because you you were born in a royal bloodline or kung what you have a, your parents have good names? Or mga taos, taas na tao mga ginikanan ni mo, you boast on that? Or do you boast on your wealth because you have a lot of money? Or do you boast on your educational attainment? Kay taas ang imong pag-aralan? Or na kay gipag-aralan compared sa uban na walay pinag-aralan? Or do you have, you're boasting about your Latin honors? Your achievements in life? What you have done in your life? Is that, if, if, is, are, are those things uh, important to you or very important such that they define who you are. So we should consider all of these things that we hold dear as worthless. Dapat tratuhon nato sila, worthless sila, kumpara, uh, compared to the value of knowing Christ. Do you know why so many people are not joyful? It's because they, they chase after worthless things of the world. Some people chase after money. Trabaho sila, trabaho para magpadato, pero dili makahatag ug nila ug kalipay kanila. Because all of these things are rubbish. Some people um, chase after fame and reputation. They want to be recognized by people, they want to be famous. And the problem is once their fame fades away. Wala na because uh, their identity is on their fame. Parang wala, murag wala na sila purpose. And some people finds their identity in their honors, in their uh, Latin honors, in the, parang, wow, kabright ni mo, parang ganon. And then, when they, when they uh, experience failure in grades or in life, parang dili nila madawat. They are so devastated. And some people chase after pleasure in life. And such that when all of these pleasures are gone, they will feel uh, sad. They will feel bitter. So how do we count all of these things as loss? Does it mean that um, baliwala na tong kwarta na to? I, anyway, sabi ni Pablo, rubbish. So does it mean that we have to throw away your, our money? 
or do we have to throw away or sell everything that we have? Well, uh, does it mean that we have to ignore uh, or be ashamed of our family, be, ignore uh, the achievements that we have before? Well, it does not mean that way. Because actually, kung lantaw nato sa life ni Paul, it, uh, although he consider all of his religious training, his education as rubbish, pero gigamit niya. He used his uh, knowledge of the law to debate with the uh, mga religious teachers during his day. And he was able to write uh, these letters that uh, contained the theology that, about God. No? So makita na to, Paul used his knowledge of the law and he's being a Pharisee and he's being a Roman citizen for his advantage to further the gospel. So he used all of his talents to further the gospel. That is how he used it to gain Christ, not for himself. So in the same way, so in the same way, all our achievements in life, no, everything that uh, we have, our money, our time, our resources, we should use them all for God's glory. Gamito na to para sa ginoo. That is how we gain Christ. It doesn't mean that we have to ignore all of this. No, We have to use it for the Lord. So we find our identity in Christ, not because of what we have, but because of the Lord. And how can we know Christ? Sabi na, we have to consider all of this loss. In exchange, we have to know Christ. So what are the practical tips on how we should know Christ? Diba sabi na to, kanina, to know Christ is to have a close relationship with the Lord. And how can we know Christ? Our ultimate goal in life to be, to, is to grow closer with the Lord. Dapat palaga na to, ang relasyon na to sa ginoo. Just to cite an example, if you love someone, you would want to talk to that person often. Because you want to talk to that person because you want to know that person. Because the, mo, the, the more you know the person, the more you will fall in love with that person. And that's the key. If we want to know if we want to love the Lord, we have to know the Lord more. We have to know about His ways. We have to read about His Word so that we can discover more of the Lord. Kung mas daghan ta mailhan sa ginoo, mas may gugma nato siya. And do you know, unsa atong buhaton, pag abot nato sa langit, we, have to, we will be there to know God more, to worship Him. So dapat, diri pa lang sa kalibutan, mag-practice nata to know God more. And you know, God is infinite that it is not possible to know Him overnight. In fact, reading the Bible, every time we read the Bible, we learn new things. Uh, parang it's uh, dili ma-exhaust ang knowledge nato kay Lord because He's so rich. Our God is eternal, is inexhaustible. So, dili yun na ma- parang continuous ang atong learning sa Word of God and then daghan yun tamatunan each and every day. You know, we find joy in knowing Christ by knowing His character, what He wants, what are His commandments, etc. In fact, the Bible says in Psalm 19 verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. Kung gusto ta malipayon, we should know more about God. We should read about His Word. In fact, uh, in, Jesus also said in uh, John 15, uh, verses 10 to 11, If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So if we want to grow uh, in the knowledge of God, we have to know more about His Word. We have to read more about His Word. And in return, we will experience joy. Experience joy. So that's why, you know, instead of mag-focus ta sa mga butang sa kalibutan, instead of mag-focus ta sa mga atong kwarta, sa atong achievements, sa atong mga uh, sa ubang tao, we have to focus our joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life's goal is to know Him more daily. Bisan, uh, bahala na unsa gibuhat ng lain tao nato. We don't care anymore because what is more important to us is to know Christ. If you look at the life of Jesus, makaingon bata malipayon siya. Yes, 
Although he was, what happened here, here while he was here on earth? He was tortured. He died on the cross. But at the end of the day, he was joyful because he obeyed the command of his father, which is to give up his life for us. So we have to find our joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not to rejoice simply because things are going well to us, pero it's a matter of choice. Pili o nato na malipay ta kang Jesu Cristo. And here are some practical tips no, on how to know God more. We have to read and meditate on God's word every day. Very important na siya. Actually, paulit-ulit na ako gihisgot na siya. Kita tanan, all of us must read the word of God because the word of God is our daily bread. Dapat atong basahon ang word of God, dili lang basa, kundi mag-meditate. Kasi pwede nato basahon parang comics, pero wala tayo nasabtan. It's useless. We have to meditate. We have to internalize. If you can, you memorize God's word so that when problems come, it is the Holy Spirit which will remind you of the, those Bible verses that will speak to us. No? And aside from uh, studying the word of God, we have to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray. What if you don't know what to pray? Then ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to pray. And recently, I just learned that sometimes it's good also to pray using the Bible. You open the Psalms, you use the words of the Bible and pray, Lord, you are my, you are my shepherd. You are my rock. You are my fortress. So gamitin mo mga words uh, sa, sa Bible. Use those words to pray to the Lord. Use the, the Psalms as your guide in praying to the Lord. So you can read the Psalms. Uh, for example, you read the Psalm verse by verse. You get an idea. You pray to the Lord. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my shield. You are my, my refuge in time of trouble. Lord, dalampanan ka ginoo. So you pray the, using the Bible. No, even if you don't know how to pray, you ask the Lord, please help me how to pray. Help me how to pray. And aside from reading the Word of God and praying, we have to share the Word of God. That's how, kasi ano eh, um, you know, the best way to learn is to teach. You know that? The way, best way to learn is to teach. In fact, I, I learned so much by studying the Word of God and preaching than when I was just listening. So, the same way, if you want to know more about the Lord Jesus, share the word of God. Share the word of God. Kung, kung pwede, instead of magkita mo magchismisan, you talk about the Bible verses, you know, sa Psalm, ganito nito mo, or sa Proverbs, this one. You, 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 you share what you learn, your insights, you share with each other, and that's how you learn. That's how you uh, uh, ano, know Christ more. There is no excuse for us not to read the word of God and to pray. Ingat magod ang ubang taon, wala mo kayo time mag quiet time. Wala koy time. Do you know the saying that I do not have time? That is a myth. That is a myth. It means that it is not important to you. Because if it's important to you, you have to make time. If it's important to you, you have to make time. For example, why do you have time to eat? Because, siyempre, pag hindi ka makaon, mamatay ka. Why do you find time to sleep? Although in fairness, some people do not find a sleep necessary. That's why puyat sila sige. But still, you sleep. Diba? You still, you sleep. So, kumbaga, you have to do it because it's important. And why is it that some of you and some of us can spend hours on social media? If, if, in, on Facebook, on social media, on chatting, on texting. But we don't have time for the Lord. Diba? Masakit yun pakinggan, diba? Huh? You have time para makipagchismisan? Para mag-social media, mag-lanta o Facebook, mag-watch o YouTube, mag-watch o teleserya, teleserya, mag-watch o Darna. Pero wala kay time para magbasa sa bulong sa ginoo. So, you know, we have to change, you know. If, if you want to be joyful, sabi ni Paul, if you want to be joyful, you have to rejoice in the Lord. And how can you rejoice in the Lord if you do not know who He is in your life? Kung wala ka kailan niya, kung saan niyo pagpalipay, no? So, kailangan, we have to change. No? We have to adjust our crowded schedule. So, we have to make time. Um, the Lord does not require us to read 24, 24 hours or 8 hours a day. You know, just find time. Uh, quality time. No? It's, it's not more of the length of time, but the quality time. So, it's a good practice to spend, siguro, 15 minutes a day. Kung kaya niyo, 30 minutes a day. I think 15 to 30 minutes a day is nothing compared to 24 hours. Because if we believe that the Word of God is our daily bread, 
So dapat ato mubasa kita and dili lang ana dapat mo ampo puta. Mo ampo puta. Okay, let's go to verse 9. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Og maanaa ako kaniya, wala na ako magsalig nga mahimong matarong pinaagi sa akong kaugalingon nga gikan sa kasuguan kun dili gipakamatarong ako gikan sa pagtuo kang Kristo ang pagkamatarong nga gikan sa Dios ug pinaagi sa pagtuo do you know that uh, Psalm chapter 3 verse 9 is a summary of the entire book of Romans Philippians 3:9 is the summary of the entire book of Romans, which deals with the heart of salvation. Salvation is not by works. It's by faith and from God. So the word righteousness um, could also be translated as justification. How are we justified? Or how, do, how are we made righteous? We are made righteous because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And ato matun ananing uh, Verse 9, there are three things that we can learn from this. First is our righteousness comes from God. Our righteousness comes from God. It is a gift of God. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. It's a gift of God. Why? Kay ang Dios gipadala niya ang iyang anak nga mamatay sa krus alang sa atong atong sala. It's God who gave his gift to us so we can become righteous through God's gift, through God's grace. And second, we can learn from this passage is that righteousness or justification is by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, we receive justification or we become justified or become righteous because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Atong pagtuo, pagsalig kang Heso Kristo. And then the third thing that we can learn is that the righteousness from God is what matters than observing the law or the righteousness from observing the law. So it's very clear here that we become righteous because of our faith in the Lord Jesus. Nahimo ta matarong sa mata sa Dios, pinaagi sa atong pagtuo, dili sa atong kaugalingon sa pagsunod sa balaod. So we do not become righteous by following the law. We do not become righteous by following the Ten Commandments because nobody can honestly say that we have followed the Ten Commandments. Because even one sin, a white lie, na makaka, na makaka, that's, know, that's already a sin. So we cannot become righteous because the Bible is very clear. Even one blemish, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot be righteous. Kailangan... We have to be perfect. And, and it's impossible because the Bible is very clear that uh, no one can say that they are sinless because even our good works are filthy rags. Atong mga yung buhatan, para sa mata sa Diyos, baliwala. Moto, wala yung usa na to, makaingon, na makaad to sa langit, pinaagi sa atong binuhatan. Nobody can say, Lord, you have to save me because I have donated so much in the church. Lord, awa, daghan ko gidonate, ako magtukot yung simbahan, left and right. That will not save you. You cannot say that you'll be saved because you've been, uh, you've been following the Ten Commandments or you've been following all the teachings of the Bible. It's impossible. It's impossible. So it's very clear here from this passage that we are saved by faith in Christ alone. By, in Christ alone, by faith alone, not because of work. Okay, don't get me wrong. Dili pa sabot ana na, okay, uh, Anyway, we're saved already. It doesn't matter what we do. In fact, if we, you are really saved, it should show in your action. Dapat makita ang inyong faith sa inyong binuhatan. Because uh, faith is not alone. Uh, your faith should be manifested by works. Your, your good works should back up your faith. That is why it's very important, my brothers and sisters, that we have to live holy lives, to do good works. And if we are struggling with uh, following the Lord, then we have to ask for God's grace 
God, uh, ask for God's Holy Spirit no? to help us live a holy life. I know it's very difficult, but we need God's grace who will be the one to sanctify us through and through. So makita na to, dire, no? um, That is why a lot of people are saying that they don't need to go to church because they feel that they are better than everyone else. And that's the problem. Because if you compare yourself with other people, then probably you're correct. Because in fairness, probably you're not a murderer, you're not a rapist, you're not a killer. So para ni mo okay na ka. But unfortunately, if we compare ourselves to the standard of the Lord, then makaingon ka, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm, a, I'm filthy. That is why. What is very important is that we have to have that saving faith. And we can have that joy by having, by knowing God, no? by, by knowing God and uh, having that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's go to verse 10. Sabi ni Pablo, I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings. Gusto kong maila ko pagayod si Kristo o masinati ko ang mga gahom sa iyang paggabanhaw o makaambit ako sa iyang mga pagantos. So, gi-elaborate ni Pablo what else he wants to know. Diba sabi na, I want to know Christ. So, knowing Christ, by the way, is not more of doctrine, hindi lang puro head knowledge, but also to experience the Lord. So the question is, have any of you experienced the Lord in your life? Na-experience ba ninyo love ni Lord? Have, have you known Christ intimately and experientially? Have you experienced Him being true in your life? You know, it's possible to experience the love of the Lord. Kailangan, we have to nurture that ano, growth. No? Dapat dita mo contento na parang baby Christian na lang, parang Sunday na lang, matuto sa simbahan, that's the rest of the week, ganun na lang ta. It's not enough. Kailangan, we have to grow in the knowledge of the Lord because that will give us joy. Okay? If you want to be joyful in your life, then you have to cultivate a close relationship with the Lord. You have to cultivate that close relationship. And aside from that, aside from knowing Christ, ingon ni Pablo, gusto niya, he wants to know the power of his resurrection. What do you mean by that? I want to know the power of God's resurrection. Meaning, Paul wanted to know uh, the power that God used to resurrect the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because once you know that God is that powerful that He can resurrect the dead, then it means that God has the power to conquer sin and death. And that God has the power to give believers the power to overcome temptation and live holy lives. So by knowing the power of the Lord, then we will know that God has the power to change us. Ito, ito kanindot sa gospel because you know if we try if we're trying to change on our own it's impossible that's why we need God's grace mga ito grasya sa Ginoo Lord tabangin ko Lord na mausab ko mahimo ko parehas kanimo it's through the power of God's resurrection if God can resurrect a dead person then God can change a sinful person into a godly person it's a bible diba the old things have passed and the new have come Ang old creature na to, pwede patyo ng ginoo para mabanhaw ta. We are now a new creature who is like our Lord Jesus Christ. And aside from that, sabi ni Pablo, I want to know Christ, the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings. Kasi pasabot ane, gusto ni Pablo na ma-identify kang Christ through His suffering. In fact, if you remember uh, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29, ingin ni Pablo, For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for Him. It's very clear from the Bible, Paul is t- telling us Christians expect suffering in this world. Ayaw mo paghunaw na, pag anak mo sa Diyos, exempted mo. No. Very clear sa Bible, we have to share in the suffering of Christ. You know, our, our Lord Jesus Christ is a man of sorrows. He's familiar with suffering. He died on the cross. Grabe kaya ang yung pinagdaanan. And what, the Paul, what Paul is saying, if Christ has suffered, if we want to become more like Christ, we should be ready to suffer like Christ. Meaning, we, have to be, we, are, we are to be ready to suffer for our faith. We have, to, we have to be ready to suffer for persecution from other people. Kung sulti ang tao, dili maayos sa ubang tao, agi sa atong pagtuo, okay lang. 
Okay lang na siya. We have to suffer for the Lord. And then, sabi niya, we have to become like Jesus in His death. What do you mean by this one? To become like Christ in His death. What happened to Christ? He was crucified on the cross. So we have to become like Christ, meaning we have to take up our own cross and follow Him. We have to take our own cross and follow Him. What do you mean by that? Meaning, what did Jesus do? He sacrificed everything to do the Father's will. In the same way, dapat kita atong yun i-sacrifice tanan. Ang atong achievements in life, our money, our relationship, or everything, everything, sacrifice them for the Lord. Ibig sabihin, para nato, everything is not important anymore. Our life is not important anymore. We have to follow Him. In fact, we are called to die to ourselves and to live for God. I know it's very difficult, but to come to think of it, to die for ourselves, meaning, dapat ma- 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 mawala sa ato ang selfishness. That is why a lot of people are not happy because they are so selfish, they are so absorbed. I want this, I want that, I want this. But once you live a life like Paul, that you're willing to die to yourself, parang wala ka na, wala, I don't care about my ambition anymore. I want to follow Christ. Yun lang, that is all that matters. Then, whatever happens in our life, wala na. It doesn't affect us anymore. It, it will not give us grief because all of these are nothing. No, I'm willing to die. Inguni Pablo, sabi na, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ who live in me. The life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Dapat inana po atong attitude that, that, you know, I don't care anymore, that I'm, uh, it's not about me anymore. Lord, your will be done. Whatever happens to me, your will be done. So to become like Christ is to become like Jesus, to embrace his suffering also, to take up the cross and to leave behind, you know, set aside our entitlement. Parang we don't care about material things anymore. Parang si Lord na lang ang atong focus. And then last verse, verse 11. And so somehow to attain the resurrection from the dead. Aron nga pinaagi ni ini mahimong mabanhaw usab ako gikan sa mga patay. So the ultimate goal of Paul in his life, para sa kanya, is willing to die. Kasi ang, ang pinaka, ang focus niya is mubanhaw siya at the last day. When Christ come, he will be resurrected and that is more important. That is more important than what he is experiencing in the world during his lifetime. Parang wala lang pakialam. Bahala na, maglisod ako, basta importante, pag-abot ni Christ, pag-abot ni Kristo, ako mabanhaw po kaniya. So, so, we just pause until here muna tayo and then we will continue next week for the following passages. So, what can we learn from this passage? So, in this world, no, uh, there are lots of things that rob us of our joy. The circumstances in our life, people, the things, our money, material things. And if any of these things change or is taken away from us, usually, magulta. Dapat dili. Because we have to change our perspective in life. Our focus should not be on material things. Our focus should not be on people. Our focus should not be on our achievements. Rather, our focus must be on the Lord. That is why the first lesson that we can learn is that we have to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoicing is an action word. It is not a feeling. Kahit hindi mo feel, pero pilitin mo. I will rejoice in the Lord. Malipay ko sa ginoo. And that is, uh, rejoicing the Lord is the safeguard against fear, doubt, discouragement, despair. Kailangan, you have to uh, put it in you that I will rejoice. I will be happy. And then the second lesson that we can learn is that we have to watch out for those people that would rob us of our joy. During post time, those are the dogs, evil doers, mutilators. So these are the Judaizers. Na may mga Judaizers sa panahon karon? Well, these are the uh, parang sinasabi ng Pharisees. Parang ito yung mga Christians na uh, parang they put a lot of requirements. Dapat 
kanina dapat buhaton ni mo ha and because of those uh, people like Pharisees parang uh, other people got discouraged that did ay ayoko na din ako mo ato simbahan din ako ganahan mag, maging follower ni Christ kasi parang lisod di ay no we have to be careful that um, we 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 should not impose burdens on other people that it will discourage them from coming to Christ in fact kanin mga ano um, ang Christian ethics no very Ano lang, uh, if you summarize it, the Christian ethics is that we have to be more like Christ. We have to be more like Christ. We have to be careful. We have to, actually, we have to balance. We have to teach people to obey the Lord. But, uh, dapat dili na to maghatag og discouragement na sobrang pabug, pabug, uh, pabigat na parang i-warn mo yung tao. Pag hindi ka sumunod, hindi ka na Christian. Parang ma-discourage ang tao. No? We have to be careful. Because uh, we have to not, we should not become Judaizers. Because at the end of the day, we are saved by faith through grace, and then we, and uh, obviously we exhort people to do good works, to live a holy lives, because that will show that they really have saving faith. Okay. And then number three, we must consider all our deeds, works, and achievements as loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ. So, yung family mo your family the fam- your family name your achievements in life your money your wealth your uh, your latin honors or your good looks or your bad looks or whatever dapat you should not boast on any of them because these are of the flesh dapat wala kay uh, dapat dili ka mag mag mag, mag sigar bo aning mga butanga kay kaning mga butanga bali wala ni compared to the greatness of knowing Christ. Instead, we have to use our talents for the Lord. Kasi, it's no longer I who live. Eh. It's everything, no? Tanan mga naan ako, Lord, ako ihatag ni mo. Because it's no longer I who live, but you live in me. And number four, our joy comes when we are found in Him. Not having the righteousness of our own that comes from the law, but having the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. We are saved by faith, by grace, not by good works. So our good works cannot save us. But obviously, faith is not alone. Our saving faith must show that uh, must show it by our good works and our living holy lives. And number five, our ultimate goal is to know Christ, the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His suffering. So what is your ultimate goal in life? If your ultimate goal in life is to become rich, you will never be happy. Because uh, di, wala yung tao makaingon na parang tama na ni, tama na yung kwarta. It will never be enough. If your goal in life is to be the most famous guy in the world, I'm sorry to tell you, it will not give you joy. Because you can never be the famous guy. Because there will be somebody who is better than you or is greater than you. If you want, uh, if your source of joy is Mga happy, happy, happy times. I'm telling you, it's not always happy times. Because there will be times of trouble, times of suffering. So you should not focus on these things. You should not focus on material things in the world. You should not focus on your achievements. Instead, we have to focus on the Lord. Our joy should be focused on the Lord. And how do we become joyful in the Lord? By knowing Christ more. By reading His Word, by praying, by sharing His Word. And then we know the power of his resurrection because si Lord lang yod ang maghatag og gahom nato na mag-usab nato mahimo ta, ta parehas kaniya so that we become be, we become more like Jesus and then we share in the fellowship of his suffering. So if ever you are suffering right now my brothers and sisters consider it all joy count it all joy. Ay mo kalguol because kung si Cristo gani naglisod that is God's will for you. That's God's will for you. So our ultimate goal in life is to be happy in the Lord, not in our circumstances. We have to be joyful always. So let's all uh, uh, stand up and let's pray to the Lord. Lord, salamat Lord sa imong pulong, O God. Lord, um, if any one of us are discouraged today, kung naan na mo na discouraged, O Lord, among ipanalangin, O God, na usban ni mo among huna-huna, Lord, that our source of joy should not be our circumstances in this world. Ang among kalipay, dili dapat magbase sa laing tao, 
kung na ba'y nahigugman na o wala, kung na ba'y mga amigo o wala, o na ba'y kwarta, o na ba'y makaon, o na ba'y um, mga butang sa kalibutan, Lord. Our source of joy should not be the achievement, our titles, or our Latin honors, O oh God. All of them are considered rubbish. Instead, Lord, amoy panalangin, Lord, that utroho ni mo among hunahuna, Lord, that our joy will be focused on the Lord, that we will rejoice, not because we feel like to, bisan wala na mo nabati, pero dapat buhato na mo kini. We will rejoice in the Lord. And among panalangin, Lord, ang imong katawahan, Lord, na, that we will uh, enjoy you, Lord, that we will have this heart to know you more, O oh God, to read your word, Lord, to have this hunger to know you, Lord, to have this hunger to read about your word, to pray about you, uh, to, to pray to you, Lord God, and share your word, O oh God. And it is my prayer, O oh God, that let us not be satisfied, Lord, with you, Lord, that uh, let us be satisfied in you, Lord God, and uh, give us the joy of our salvation, O oh Lord. And it's our prayer, O oh God, that you will um, give us a new perspective in life. And nagpasalamat good kami, Lord, sa pulong ninyo, Lord, because your word is life, O oh God. And I pray for your children, O oh Lord, that you will help us experience a joy like no other, a joy that only comes from our faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Salamat, Lord. Tagay mi o kalipay, Lord. Salamat. Sa pangalan ni Jesus Christo, among ipanalangin. In Jesus' name, all this we pray. Everybody says, Amen.